Hey guys and welcome to my first CNC project using the X-Carve sent to me by Inventables. In this project I'm going to be showing you how to make this simple tool rack to hold all of the different tools and organise them for the X-Carve. First of all I'd like to say that this video was inspired by another video made by Travis Luca. His video was really good, he made a tool organiser pretty similar to this using different tools for the X-Carve. He didn't quite use the same amount of tools but his was lying flat on his desk. Since I don't have much bench space I wanted to make a wall mounted one. So this tool rack holds all of the different tools such as the wrenches which are used for operating the spindle and all of the different allen wrenches which come with the X-Carve and also the different clamps which you can use for holding down material. However if you don't have all of these tools you can easily customise the shape and size of all of these different parts and with a bit of trial and error you can easily make it for the right size tools for you. The reason that I've decided to do this for my first 3D milling project on the CNC is because it's quite a simple thing to do. It's basically just drawing out a flat shape and extending it downwards. I also wanted to test out how well my CNC can carve out some shapes like this where it's got to go down and see how accurate it is. And I also wanted to test out how powerful easel is. And I have to say with all of them, I was very impressed. So that's pretty much all. Make sure you go and check out Inventables. The link will be in the description down below. And let's get started and see how you make this tool rack. So I started by trying to make the part for the calipers, which I was going to be putting in. I'm pretty sure that most calipers calipers are a similar size to this so if you do download the files if you've got calipers a similar size to this you'll probably be able to put them in and I did it with a combination of triangles and squares rotated at different angles you can then group them all together and easel treats them as one singular object. So first off I went into easel and I decided that I wanted to try and design the entire thing in easel just so I got to know the program a little bit better. I could have much easier gone into something like Inkscape or Adobe Illustrator and created a scalable vector file or an SVG and imported it into easel but I decided that I wanted to see how far I could go just using the simple shapes to show that you can't actually create complex shapes in easel. As I was doing this I had all of my tools laid out on my desk on my cutting mat so I could see all of the right dimensions and then I could transfer them over into easel. So I've got my design done and I've checked the toolpath and it looks pretty good. Now it's time to try and carve it out with the first attempt. Plug in the USB cable. The carve button on the top right of easel should light up and you should be able to click it. Then go through all of the different steps which you normally go through in easel like confirming the home position and making sure everything's secure and then you'll be ready to carve. <laughs> Easel will then start to cut out all of the different parts using your machine and thanks to Easel's new upgraded G-code it doesn't cut out each part with one pass individually, it just does one part at a time which means it's a much quicker job, however this entire thing did take around 5 hours in total. This would have been much quicker if I was using a larger router bit but at this point in time my larger collets hadn't arrived and I couldn't fit a quarter inch router bit into the spindle but now I could probably do this job in about 1 hour. So this is what the MDF try looks like once it's done, it's sort of messed up over here and since the MDF is so soft it's sort of really fluffy and it's got sort of a ragged edge instead of a smooth edge which is what I'm looking for. Also all of these different areas up here where there were meant to be dowels coming all the way up, since the MDF is so soft they just snap off really easily, you can just pull it off like that and it's not very good. So I'm going to now remake this out of some harder pine wood. I had to lower the feed and speed rate for the pine wood so this carve took a little bit longer and I corrected all of the different shapes where tools didn't quite fit but now it works perfectly. This is what it looks like once I remade it out of the harder pine wood and I think it looks a lot nicer. All of the edges are much smoother and also these dowels up here aren't going to break off as easily. Also you can see here I engraved in X carve and all of these different parts fit really nicely inside but I don't think it quite looks good enough so I'm going to spray paint it black. So this is what it looks like after I've done the sanding and as you can see all of the paint that was on the surface has been removed where all of the bits that were carved has remained and I think it looks pretty cool, especially over here where it says X carve and the bits highlighted by the paint. Unfortunately things like this pin have popped off but it doesn't really matter since that wasn't really necessary and the tool will still fit inside this area easily without that pin in place and I could instead just put in a wooden dowel but there's no need. So now it's time to try and get this wall mounted. So about here it looks good.
This is what it looks like once it's on the wall and as you can see the screws are going straight into the roll plugs in the wall and it's solid. I've also added a little back piece at the bottom so that it tips the whole piece backwards so that the tools don't just tip out. This is what it looks like once it's got all of the tools inside and I think that it looks quite nice. All of the tools are really easily organised and you can really easily access them. You can just take them, grab them out, use them and then easily put them back. So for future upgrades to my x carve, I've got quite a few that I want to do. Firstly, I want to ask, add some sort of dust shoe or dust hood that's see-through. Maybe make it out of a plastic bottle as I've seen in the past on YouTube. And then add my dust extractor here so it'll pick up all of the dust because as you can see, it's just sort of getting everywhere at the moment now. I'm to come back and babysit the machine every five minutes and hoover up all of the dust but hopefully that will reduce that i also need to make a rack for all of my new collets for that for the fitting different sized bits into the spindle as well as that i want to tidy up all of this wiring and sort of exclude this and put it somewhere else because i don't want to have it right next to the machine because when dust gets inside it it could be a fire hazard so if any of you've got any ideas on how to do that then please post them in the comments section down below if you have any other ideas on how I can improve the x carve then please post them in the comment section down below as well. But thanks for watching guys and I hope that you've enjoyed this video because that's all and see you next week.